Most cores are cylinders with axially aligned fuel assemblies, such as the one seen here. In the standard configuration, each core is made up of fuel assemblies, which are themselves a square collection of fuel rods and control rods. Here is an example core made up of such fuel assemblies. In a normal boiling water reactor, we have a 9x9 fuel assembly. This image shows four 9x9 fuel assemblies with a cross-hatch control rod between them. Typical pressurized water reactors will have a 17x17 17 -17 fuel assembly. It is common to model reactors by looking at a single fuel pin cell that is one component of an entire assembly. The fuel pin cells are defined as a repeated geometry where there is a fuel pin at the center. This in turn is surrounded by a void or gap region, which in turn is surrounded by the fuel cladding, and outside of that is the coolant region. Extracting power from a reactor is a matter of removing fission heat from the fuel pins in a controlled manner. Ignoring other subatomic effects, such as photon interactions, heat leaves the fuel pins through standard conduction and convection. Conductive heat transfer away from a fuel pin is governed by the density times the heat capacity multiplied by the time derivative of the temperature equal to the source of the heat, in our case the fuel pin, plus the divergence of the thermal conductivity times the gradient of the temperature. Let's assume that we have a time independent system so that dt dt is equal to zero. Let's also assume that we have a constant volumetric heat source in the fuel region, that is, where the radius is less than the fuel radius. Having a constant volumetric heat source is the same as saying that fissions are happen happening evenly everywhere throughout this fuel region. Then, the divergence of the thermal conductivity times the gradient of the temperature is equal to the negative of the heat source, which in our case is equal to the negative of the volumetric heat rate, Q triple prime. So for a fuel region which has a constant thermal conductivity, K sub F, we see that the thermal conductivity multiplied by the Laplacian of the temperature is equal to the negative of the volumetric heat rate. Recall that the Laplacian for cylindrical coordinates is 1 over the radius times the partial derivative of the radius times the partial derivative of F uh, dr plus the theta component 1 over the radius squared times the second derivative of F with respect to theta plus the second partial derivative of the axial component of F with respect to z. So, applying this to our expression above, we see that the Laplacian of the temperature is equal to the negative of the volumetric heat rate divided by the thermal conductivity of the fuel. If we also assume that the fuel pin is an infinitely long cylinder, then there will not be any theta or z dependence. Therefore, the second partial derivatives with respect to theta and z will drop out of our expression and will be left with 1 over the radius d dr r d t dr equals minus q triple prime over kf. To solve this expression, let's start by multiplying both sides by r dr and integrating, as is seen here. This then produces the expression r dt dr equals negative q triple prime over 2 kf k sub f r squared. Now let's multiply both sides by dr over r and integrate again. This yields the integral of t at some radius r to t at the fuel radius r sub f dt equals negative the integral from r to r sub f of q triple prime over 2kf r dr. Doing so will yield an additional r squared over 2 on the right hand side and we'll want to evaluate this at the limits of integration.
Doing so yields the conductive heat equation that the temperature at some radius r is equal to the temperature at the surface of the fuel, r sub f, plus the volumetric heat rate divided by 4 times the thermal conductivity of the fuel times r squared, rf squared minus r squared for all r that are less than the fuel radius, that is, inside of the fuel region. Moving outwards, in between the fuel and cladding, lies a vacuum void region, also called a gap. Since it is a vacuum, or near enough to one, there is no heat conduction from the outer radius of the fuel, r sub f, to the inner radius of the cladding, r sub v, or the void radius. Also, as a practical reason for why there is no conduction through the gap, is that the fuel pellets will inevitably swell due to fission product gas buildup inside of the fuel region, and the fuel region will eventually contact with the cladding. This is effectively the same as having no cladding region whatsoever. However, we will need to transport heat through the cladding, that is, when the radius is greater than the void radius, but less than the outer cladding radius, r sub c. Also note that since the cladding does not fission, there is no source of heat from within the cladding itself. The only source of heat comes from the fuel region radiating heat onto the inner surface of the cladding. Again, let's assume a static system such that dt dt equals to zero. However, let's also assume that the volumetric heat rate is equal to the linear heat rate divided by the surface area. That is, Q triple prime is equal to Q prime divided by pi r squared in cylindrical coordinates. So therefore, our conductive heat transport equation becomes the Laplacian of the temperature equal to negative of the linear heat rate divided by pi r squared times the thermal conductivity of the cladding, k sub c, as seen here. Again, let's expand the Laplacian cylindrical coordinates and note that there happens to be no theta or z dependence. 1 over r d dr of r dt dr equals negative the linear heat rate divided by pi r squared times the thermal conductivity of the cladding. Again, multiplying both sides by r dr and integrating will yield the expression seen here. This is then evaluated to r dt dr equals negative linear heat rate divided by pi times the thermal conductivity multiplied by the natural log of the radius. Further, let's multiply both sides again by dr over r and integrate once more. This yields the expression seen here. Evaluating this expression with the limits of integration, we see that the right-hand side becomes the linear heat rate divided by 2 pi k sub c times the natural log squared of r. So finally, for the cladding, the temperature profile as a function of the radius is equal to the temperature at the outer cladding radius, r sub c, plus the linear heat rate divided by 2 pi k sub c multiplied by the difference in the natural log, or in, in the, the difference of the square of the natural logs of the cladding radius minus the radius that we're evaluating at. Everything that we have seen up to this point has been conductive heat transfer. However, for the void and coolant regions, we will also need convective heat transfer. Let's consider a bulk fluid which happens to be in contact with some surface at some ter surface temperature T sub s. The heat transfer into this bulk fluid is governed by Newton's law of cooling. This states that the heat rate Q is equal to H, the heat transfer coefficient, times the surface area, times the difference of the surface temperature minus the bulk fluid temperature. In cylindrical coordinates, we can rearrange this to be 
delta t, which is equal to t sub s minus t sub b, is equal to the linear heat rate divided by 2 pi times the radius times the heat transfer coefficient h. In our fuel pin cell, the maximum temperature occurs right in the center of the fuel pin, while the minimum temperature in this system occurs in the middle of the fluid, or at the boundary of the fuel pin cell. The difference between these two extremes, delta T max, can be computed by combining the conductive and convective heat transfer terms for all of the regions in the fuel pin cell, depending on which term is applicable to them. Doing so yields the expression delta T max is equal to the linear heat rate divided by 2 pi times 1 over 2 kf plus 1 over r sub f times h void plus 1 over the thermal conductivity of the cladding times the difference in the natural log squared of the cladding radius minus the void radius plus 1 over the cladding radius times h for the coolant. Keep in mind that this derivation is only valid for an infinitely long reactor because we chose to ignore the, both the theta and z components in its derivation. So finally, if we chose to have a reactor of a finite height, h, then we can include the z component of the Laplacian. Doing so yields the expression d squared t dz squared is equal to the negative of the volumetric heat rate divided by the thermal conductivity of the fuel, k sub f. Integrating this once with respect to dz yields dt dz equals negative q triple prime divided by kf times z. Integrating again yields T evaluated from 0 to Z equals negative of the volumetric heat rate divided by Q triple prime over 2 times the thermal conductivity of the fuel times Z squared evaluated from 0 to Z. This in turn yields the expression that the temperature at a given height Z is equal to temperature at the location 0 at height 0 minus the volumetric heat rate divided by 2kfz squared.